Hi, how you doing? You recover from that New Year's hangover? Great. Happy 2024 in a world where it's a new year, but probably more of the same shit. I'm here to give you my 10 anticipated movies of 2024. Some things to keep in mind. One, if there were movies that were on my anticipated movies of 2023 list and the movies were postponed and now they're coming out in 2024, I'm not gonna re I'm not gonna double up on it. I already said Dune last year. Sorry, Dune. Still looking forward to it. Seems unfair for Dune Part 2 to be on two of these lists two years in a row. Also, Quentin Tarantino's The Movie Critic was supposed to come out in 2024, but filming was delayed, so I don't believe it's coming out in 2024. If he double times it and it somehow still makes a 2024 release date, we'll count that among the uh, anticipated. Also, <laughs> there are a lot of, there's a lot of setup for this video. I apologize for that. You might see movies that aren't on this list. Well, the reasons are simple, of which I have a few. One, I like to keep it to 10. Maybe the movies that aren't on the list are 11, 12, 13, etc. Two, maybe the forced sounding sequel just sounds unnecessary to me. So I'm not that interested right now. Three, I've seen the trailer. The trailer either didn't do anything for me or just looked like complete and total ass. Or four, and probably most likely in me constructing this list, searching the movies coming out this year, I just, just passed me by. <laughs> it's simple, it's stupid, but it happens. Also, these aren't gonna be 10 minute dissertations as to why I'm looking forward to these movies. I might have more to say about some than others. But in the end, this is just a brief, hey, these are 10 movies in 2024. I'm looking forward to myself. All right, no need for the dramatic countdown of 10, 9, 8, anything like that. These aren't in any particular order, so first up, Argyle. Matthew Vaughn can be hit or miss, but when he's a hit, he's an absolute hit. Argyle looks like the fun, eccentric spy thriller genre he's now known for because of Kingsman. All about a writer who apparently accidentally wrote the truth so now she gets wrapped up in the spy world. All with Henry Cavill getting a lot of shit for his haircut in the movie. <laughs> I was like, what? You guys aren't Broken Arrow fans? That's totally the Travolta from Broken Arrow. Next up, Mickey 17. I do not know jack shit about the premise of this movie from the very brief under a minute, I believe, teaser trailer. I simply know what I need to know, and that is Bong Joon-ho is directing, Robert Pattinson starring. For me, that's enough. Next, The Fall Guy starring Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt. Directed by David Leitch, co-director of the first John Wick, also Deadpool 2. A stuntman who retires gets brought back into the business. The star of this big movie production disappears. The trailer looks like it could be a fun, exciting popcorn time at the movies. Cherry on top, I like that it's showing love to the unsung heroes of action movies, the stunt crew. We go from co-director of John Wick to a movie that's a spin-off of John Wick, Ballerina. One of the things that stands out in the John Wick movies, the John Wick universe, is the world they built there. This world of fantastical locations, rules, assassin code. You give me that world in a revenge quest starring Ana de Armas and I'm gonna look forward to that. Next we have Deadpool 3. I suppose this had to be on here. The first two Deadpools were a great time at the movies. The Deadpool 3 has taken a while to actually come out. Studio buys, strikes, there are reasons for it. Well, Ryan Reynolds is so good in the role, I can't help but look forward to that any given year. This looks to be Deadpool on a multiverse adventure filled with references and cameos, which thematically looks to be a great opportunity for Deadpool to address or talk a proper amount of shit on studio over-reliance on multiverse and cameo porn. The Deadpool movies are fun, they surprise in a world where Hugh Jackman said he was done playing Wolverine, but he's back in Deadpool 3 donning his classic yellow outfit. They definitely seem to want to give fans what they want. Next up, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Why? Because that reboot trilogy of Planet of the Apes I thought was great. And I'm curious to see that world some generations after the fact. This is directed by Wes Ball, the director of those uh, Maze Runner movies, which the first one I remember shockingly enjoying it, enjoying most of it anyway. The other two weren't as good as the first one. I go in cautious to Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Still, it's the pre-existing trilogy that this is springboarding off of that is selling me on that. The movie does have my curiosity. Next up, A Quiet Place, day one. Though this is not directed by John Krasinski, it's kind of like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes where it's the movies that came before it that is pitching me and selling me on this new movie. Though we got a glimpse of when the aliens first arrived in the previous movie, I've always been curious to see a more in-depth look at that. That's why, I mean, you take a look at The Walking Dead. <laughs> you remember The Walking Dead? They're still making Walking Dead shit. Whole generation has no idea the event that The Walking Dead was when it was airing at one point. But the point is, a Fear of the Walking Dead was a look at, well, how it actually all fell apart because The Walking Dead just kind of picks up with Rick Grimes waking up in the hospital and never got to see it. And that's what made Fear the Walking Dead feel different and feel unique from The Walking Dead until it became The Walking Dead also. We all enjoy navigating a fictional apocalypse, but there is something else to be said about seeing 
how it became that, the genesis of that. Next up, Robert Eggers is directing a remake of Nosferatu. I would say that's a match made in heaven. I feel like we're talking about another place. Point is, that is a perfect marriage. For those of you who don't know, that's a remake of the classic silent German film Nosferatu made in 1922. They believe they've done a remake since, a remake or two, definitely one. I heard about him wanting to do this back when The Witch came out, I think. Then I stopped hearing about it. I was like, okay, I guess it's not happening. So I was pleased to find out, no, that is not dead. That's still happening and he's still directing it. I can't find an official picture of Bill Skarsgård as Orlock, but Robert Eggers says he looks great. I mean, it'd be his job to say so, but I actually believe him. So Willem Dafoe is in this Robert Eggers remake of Nosferatu. He was also in Shadow of the Vampire. So, what's reality? Next up, if you're looking for that escapism from the social political divide, well, there's a Civil War movie coming out, not of the Captain America variety, but of the, oh yeah, one day variety. The curiosity from this one comes from whether or not it is going to be kept apolitical. Is it gonna be like a political Rorschach? Are you gonna see tactics used by the right and the left that led to this? Are half the people gonna walk out of this movie and be like, and that's why you shouldn't vote for Donald Trump. And the other half walk out of the movie and be like, and that's why you shouldn't vote for Joe Biden. I don't know, that would be an interesting way to go about this, but this is a movie about a modern American civil war, social political divide that is coming out in election year. Right, so you can bet this is absolutely positively not gonna be a Hollywood movie telling you how to vote this November, <clears throat> right. No, it probably will be. They probably won't use the term Republican or Democrat, but there will be signs and tells in the way people talk in which people will be like, okay, so that's that side. But when watching the trailer, I gotta say, it was when Jesse Plemons came on, I was like, oh, oh shit, here we go. He's so good. How is he that good? It's, he's perfect for a movie like this. Okay. What kind of American are you? Oh, it just, it just hits because it's so real. It's real because those are conversations people already have. Might not be phrased that way, but those conversations do happen. That's why there's a part of me that's like, is, is it strictly speaking responsible to make this movie right now? Navigating a fictional apocalypse, that's fun, I said. Not one that's this fucking real. I'm not necessarily looking forward to this movie or the conversations surrounding this movie, but if I had curiosity bottled up into one movie this year, it's the, it's this. Next up, Joker, Folie Adieu. Folie Adieu, Folie Adieu. I'll try to get the pronunciation down by the time the movie comes out. Point is Joker 2. Now I thought the first Joker was great. When it became the highest grossing rated R film of all time, I was like, okay. So blank checks are going out and there's gonna be a Joker 2. Looks like Lady Gaga is playing Harley Quinn and Folie Adieu means the uh, transference of one's delusional mindset onto another. Harley Quinn. The reports that the movie is going to be a musical is strange, though Lady Gaga is an incredible singer and actor, so she's a great pick for this. It could work, it could be the detriment of the film. We will see. Now, Todd Phillips' track record for sequels notwithstanding, see Hangover 2 and 3, can't help it, movie has my curiosity and attention. And that makes 10, those are 10 movies I'm looking forward to in 2024. With any luck, one or two of them might end up on my top 10 best list of 2024 video at the end of the year. This year, as many of the years before, <laughs> most of the gems are Probably gonna be movies they don't even know about yet. But we will see what happens as Kane said at the end of Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver, fate promises more twists before this drama unfolds completely. But the movies you're looking forward to in 2024, whatever they are, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.